Welcome to the FileAid MVS Online Reformat Utility Module. Here you will learn how the FileAid Reformat Utility can address your business needs when reformatting is required. There are any number of reasons why a file might need reformatting. Mergers, acquisitions, and new applications are just three examples. When reformatting is required, there are some basic considerations that should be examined before any reformat specifications are defined. How to handle any bad or invalid data that might be present in the source file. How to handle any unreformatted records. Perhaps the source file contains record types 1 and 2, and only the type 2 records should go through the reformat process. How to populate any new target fields that do not appear in the source file. And finally, how to handle different data types. If, for example, the source field is simply numeric, but the target field is packed. With the FileAid reformat utility, gone are the days of tediously mapping source to target one field at a time by data type and record position. Instead, fields are mapped automatically based on COBOL or PL1 record layouts. We will go through a reformat example and look closely at two areas of user setup. First, there is mapping, which is based on record layouts. Identification is required for the source fields to be used, the target fields, any constants used instead of mapping, and constants required for new fields. Second, there is filtering, which is based on fields. Filtering may be based on specific values, ranges of values, numeric checks, and alphabetic checks. We will begin with mapping. A reformat begins with the source and target record layouts. In this case, many of the source and target data names are the same. For this example, we will simplify the layouts. Remember that this is the planning before going through the FileAid reformat setup screens. This is the full source record layout. Here, unused fields, those not included in the target record layout, have been removed. Next, the fields mapped one to one have been removed, leaving us with those source fields to be examined more closely. This is the target record layout. Here, the fields mapped one to one have been removed, leaving us with those target fields to be examined more closely. Here, we show both reduced layouts. Next, we have removed the COBOL structuring. To begin the mapping, the date of birth source and target fields have the same names, but the target fields have been reordered. Even with the position change, since the mapping is by name, no user action will be required. Next, fields shown differ in that the target field is packed. FileAid handles the packing, so again, no user action will be required. There are three target fields with no corresponding source fields, so we must determine their values. We have chosen all nines for the phone extension, ZZ for the building code, and zero for the floor number. Now we will look at the filtering to be used in this example. We will examine three fields in each source record and only reformat those records meeting these conditions. The employee's middle initial must not be blank, their life insurance withholding amount must be greater than zero, and the state they live in must be California. 
all three conditions must be met. With the specifications set, we can begin the reformat setup. From the File Aid primary menu, choose Option 9 for the reformat utility. The options available pertain to temporary or saved reformat definitions. To save and reuse a reformat definition, complete the dataset information. The dataset must be a PDS with record format variable blocked and record length 1576. The reformat may be completed either online or by submitting a batch job. For this example, we will use option D. All options go through the same setup screens, but option D goes from setup to execution immediately with no opportunity to save the definition. Here we have entered the source and target record layout information similar to other file aid screens. Move corresponding is especially useful when the source and target data names are the same. This sets up the initial mapping, but may be overridden in the reformat definition editor covered shortly. For names differing by prefix or suffix, pressing F1 will display the tutorial with the appropriate rules. The next screen we see is the Reformat Definition Editor. The upper left displays the source record layout. Here, the field numbers are important. The bottom left displays the target record layout. The upper right area is populated by the user, if necessary, for filtering. The lower right area is populated by file aid for mapping and may be modified by the user. Let's see how this works. In our example, source field number 1 has the same name as target field number 1, so file A does the mapping because move corresponding was chosen on the previous screen. Likewise, source field number 2 has the same name as target field number 2, so file A does the mapping. Since the screen cannot accommodate all of the fields, scrolling is normally necessary. Scrolling is based on cursor position. If the cursor is on the command line, both layouts scroll simultaneously. If the cursor is placed in either layout, then only that layout will scroll. Scrolling both layouts forward, we see the mapping done by file aid. Scrolling forward again, we see that two fields were mapped, but one was not. Scrolling the source layout forward, we see that the unmapped field is subordinate to a group level variable where the target is not. To map the field manually, note the field number, then prefix it with a slash and post it to the appropriate area. The field name may be used in place of the field number if desired. The final consideration for mapping is providing constants, in this case for new fields. Here are the values shown previously, and here we see how they are entered. Numbers as is, strings enclosed in apostrophes, and in some cases keywords. More on that a bit later. Next we will look at filtering or selecting records for reformatting. Here we see the rules shown previously. For the first rule, middle initial not equal spaces, we enter the filter shown. The operators permissible are displayed in this chart. Note that these differ from operators used elsewhere in file aid. We scroll the source layout forward to enter the second filter shown here. Scrolling the source layout forward again, 
we enter the last filter seen here. Remember that multiple filters are ended and all conditions will be met. Here are some final words about filtering and mapping. For filtering based on numeric and alphabetic validation, the operators and keywords permissible are shown here. For mapping, the keyword constants available are shown here. With all specifications complete, we enter the command to execute the reformat. Next, we choose to edit the reformatted file upon completion, specify the source and target files, and choose the final processing options. Here we see the resulting message and the target file. The records that were not reformatted yet copied to the target file are often easy to find. Pressing F1 displays the record counts. Changing the viewing mode reveals several seemingly invalid values in a numeric field, most likely records that were not reformatted. If we now exclude these records, we see that there were 39. Let's go back and change the copy unselected to No and rerun the reformat. This time only 11 were reformatted. With 50 the total record count, the 39 invalid values found previously were, in fact, found on the records that were not reformatted. Scrolling to the right, we do see an occurrence of invalid data, which was copied as is from the source file. Let's examine this situation. If no filtering, that is no numeric check is done, any invalid data is copied from source to target as is. However, an attempt to evaluate invalid data halts the reformat processing immediately and an appropriate error message is displayed. Finally, scrolling to the end of the target records, we see the constants in the new fields. More detailed information may be found in the user's guide and reference manual available on Frontline. This concludes this module. Thank you.